This is the Citroen C4 Cactus facelift. Now today in our full driving review on Autogefuel, your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars today with Thomas. Exterior changes, interior and also especially the driving experience because this one has the new hydraulic suspension by Citroen where they are actually connecting this past heritage from the hydraulic suspensions with a new, a little bit different technology, how will it play out? It will be very interesting in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go! In the front you can see the Cactus is still defined by those very slim daytime running lights. They have also been updated a little bit. The main headlamp unit is however not available with LED optional, so this remains rather low spec. Of course you have to consider the price. It's actually a rather cheap car if I also compare the competition starting at 17,000 euros. For example it's a German price. And then the whole front is more more subtle, it's still somewhat, you know, overall with a lot of uh, you know, special features here, those squircles, so round um, or uh, square circles is a squircle. This is a main design element everywhere. I'm still searching for a very correct German word for a squircle, by the way, like, you know, I'm not sure, Eckkreis, I don't know. <laughs> and then you see we have less air bumps here in the front and that's also a whole scheme for the whole vehicle because it was so much polarizing before, it was not bought that much and so they tried to make it a little bit more mainstream. 4 meters 17 or 13 foot 6 is the total length, just 2 centimeters longer, just a little bit different overhang there, so that's just about the, the, the spoiler parts. You get 16 inch or 17 inch rims, those ones here are the optional 17 inch think with a very unique design again again with the squircle look then well where are the air bumps that's the biggest change before they were placed right there and very prominent now more subtle in the lower part right there however you have to think about the real effect of the air bump is then taken out a little bit so yeah and you know some say it's more likable now because it looks more elegant that's the case yes but on the other hand it lost some of the main character features it had before with the very huge air bumps. There are optional roof rails available also. This one here is without, I think also a quite elegant approach. And then those crossover wheel arches here to stress somewhat of this crossover look. Cactus writing right there. And this floating roofline effect because this one here is painted in black so the roof looks as it would be flying like a visual trick. And with some of the red accentuations, I really like that because we will find something of that of the interior scheme later on again. Also, the rear has been made a little bit more elegant and more modern, but at the same time also more mainstream alike. The whole car setup is a little bit lower, which also has something to do with the new suspension, the PHC, the Progressive Hydraulic Cushions, or also Citroen Advanced Comfort, they're calling it, for example, in Germany. It's not the real same technology they have been using before, but since there's also hydraulic on the inside, all those bumps should be evened out a little bit better. So pretty interesting to experience that then while driving the vehicle very soon. So the new suspension is not available for the entry 82 horsepower variant petrol, but then for the rest of the 1.2 liter three cylinder petrol engines here today with 110 horsepower, either with a five speed manual or a six speed automatic gearbox, then also new suspension is available and for example in Germany it's standard for all Citroen C4 Cactus because the lowest horsepower variant is not offered anymore. Then 130 horsepower also available then with a manual hand drive, same engine. And then there are also 1.6 liter 4 cylinder diesel with 100 or 120 horsepower. In this case the stronger one also has the optional automatic gearbox.
Very interesting is of course always the interior of the C4 cactus. Here again with the squircle stances on the inside of the doors and that is mostly hard plastics. But again, considering the price of the vehicle, I think that's okay. And we still have some very interesting solution like this vintage luggage design, grab handles on the inside of the door, beautifully done, nice thought out. Then this one here, the interior scheme is called Metropolitan Red, a mix of beige and red that fits to this exterior setup. So overall a great exterior interior setup. Then you also have a standard, just gray cloth if you don't pick any design scheme. And then you can also pick so-called wild gray, which would be another gray cloth. So gray is used pretty often, also inspired by some Scandinavian furniture design. And then there are also two hype gray and hype red trim limits, which include also animal skin parts. Here in this case, in Metropolitan Red, red, you can see also a red top dashboard. Also with a very interesting structure, it's not a plain plastic. It feels and looks worthy, so they also use an interesting materials here. Digital dashboard, a small one. You can look through the steering wheel, it is actually possible. A very huge steering wheel considering the size of the vehicle. And then those very interesting seats. Again, a nice color mix. Also um, redesigned here with the facelift, with those bigger areas then, with the stitches. Very nicely done. Uh, also looking forward to a seating test very soon. And if you want, you can also get a seat heating that isn't included if you pick one of the higher trims. Now let's get inside. Easy entry. It has this um, crossover style. Uh, it's not an SUV, not by all means. It really comes close more like a normal compact size vehicle. It's not too high actually, so the crossover side bumps suggest a little bit more crossover than it actually is. So there's a menu seat control with pump it up, y'all. Um, I don't have it in the lowest position because otherwise you would be falling too much backwards. So I always put it a little bit more upright because then your pelvis also moves a little bit straighter. Um, in this case then, I still have enough headroom, that's no problem. There's also a panoramic roof available, where they also use some special um, UV heat resistant glass. Of course, it still will get warmer when you have the panoramic roof than you would have just the closed one as I have here today. But glass-wise, they use now thicker glass to increase the sound insulation. I really look forward to driving this car, not only for suspension, but also how the sound insulation maybe has been improved. So stick to that driving part later on as well. The steering wheel can be controlled like this in height and also in reach. And as I said, I can still read those digital gauges and they're pretty clear and they're also kept pretty simple. And I somehow like that. I mean, you don't need much more than the gauges showing the speed, for example. Also the maximum allowed speed with a traffic sign recognition is available for this case then. Yeah, menu controls for the seat as I said earlier with the turning knob right here. And well, it's strange that the seating is right there, but Citroen has been doing that for a couple of years. So you just have to get used to it. The first seating comfort test, by the way, it feels a little bit sofa like It's also like in the pre-facelift. Mm, but on the long-term run, I can already tell you so far, I've experienced that um, there are other cars which are more comfortable for taller drivers. It might be different for if you're a little bit smaller, but as for me, I didn't feel from the seat form, you know. The services are great, but the seat form itself, um, I'm not sure what's the real reason for that, but I think they could have done a little bit more research there with taller drivers. Interior overview, again, so interesting the materials they use on top of the dashboard that feels good, looks good. And of course the color contrast, I mean, it's a matter of personal preference, but I think it's great that they offer such things. Also here with the glove box, again, the vintage luggage design and opening to the top part. And why could they have done that? Because they moved the airbag to, uh, for, for, the, for the right side, the airbag to the ceiling. So a roof airbag, pretty interesting solution here too. A seven inch screen is a standard. You could see you can also get an Apple CarPlay connection, this um, you know connect box. You get the screen set, but you have to pick some extras um, then uh, if you want the, the whole stuff in there. Soon also more deals for that. Air vents below that then. 
Then in the lower part you can put your smartphone, there's USB connecting device, also for the smartphone connectivity, 12 volt power supply or with the adapter you can have two more USB supplies than if you use uh, that one. It looks slim but also big smartphones do fit there and the start stop button here with the A, uh, six speed automatic gearbox today. The cup holders there in the front, they are not adaptive, so a little bit shallow um, and also very small, so not too good for the beverages. And a pretty big steering wheel, left side for cruise control, here on the right side then for the volume. And um, a little bit flattened end. It looks comfortable and also fits to this whole comfort scheme. And the, yeah, the squircles are also found in the interior once more. And here we go with the infotainment screen detail. Most of the time I would just use the, you know, the, the CarPlay function. However, you can, uh, let's just try if we can uh, play the <laughs> yeah, 90s style. And if we can still use the GPS while playing the Apple CarPlay music. Yes, that's actually possible. But then again, this one here takes some time. It's not the best CPU unit they have in here. Yeah about that so okay yeah you see it's here. it it takes some time to control that one so it's somewhat okay it gives you everything you need could be a little bit faster from time to time vehicle controls you can for example um, activate the um, blind spot monitor um, there will be a flashing light maybe you can see something of that when we drive the car not sure if uh, if today someone will overtake me I have a fast car, you know. Then the climate unit is right there. There are no physical buttons left. I like to have some um, here, but when you just set it like 22 degrees or like 72 Fahrenheit something and leave the AC on, it's fine. If you want to change it from time to time, AC off, AC on, vent strength and stuff, then it can be a little bit distracting and annoying, but at least it is in a higher position that you can easily access it while driving. By the way, on the inside of the doors, this one holds a lot of clutter stuff, but uh, not that very suitable to keep bigger bottles upright. The automatic gearbox, they could have done it a little bit easier. You have this step structure, if you go like this, and then like this, and this. I mean, why not just do it like straight, you know, hit a button there, for example, and then go straight uh, back again. By the way, if you want to have the manual shifting mode, do it like this, and then front and back, if you're, for example, rolling down a hill for a longer time. And then behind the manual handbrake, there's this small armrest here, could be a little bit more fixed, and then with some more room on the inside. Well, and then there's the thing that when I'm driving, I can hardly get inside here. The back part of the seat is all soft, so I can squeeze myself in there. But you see, it's not really set out for four tall adults. Headroom-wise, however, that still works somewhere, but I still had hit my head. Again, one meters 86 or six foot one. If you're smaller than that, won't be such a problem. And also if the driver in the front would be pushing more forward, you see how thick those seats are. So they've really also made them a little bit thicker that the comfort in the front is being increased. However, rear legroom, you shouldn't expect too much here in the C4 Cactus. Isofix is at the outside of each seat so you can install the child seats right there and you can also flip the seats from here in a one third two shot split you will see how that one plays out from the trunk and for cost saving reasons they sticked to this opening mechanism for the rear windows that you cannot really um, use you know a lever or something just this and i mean the question is how often will you drive with passengers in the rear how often will you use it yeah, I mean, some, in some way it's a little bit weird. In other ways, again, if it brings the cost down, you profit from that as a customer, maybe also okay. Now to the trunk area, 360 to 1,170 liters. It has a higher loading sill, so it drops them down. They have not put an additional um, loading um, cover right there. And you can see also, I think this should be covered build quality wise. It looks a little bit cheap. Um, below that here, by the way, we have a full replacement tire and when I put a cabin trolley right there in let's see how that one plays out so you can see you have actually a lot of luggage room available especially then in height there again it plays a good role that there's no additional loading cover so you can also put those cabin trolleys upright and put a lot of them next to each other then let's flip the seats see how that one plays out 
you see here that one third hey guys i'll just drop down around you can see when you put the head restraints up you can get that a little bit lower of course as you don't have this loading cover you then have a step inside the trunk area so i have to bear that in mind as well so and here we go this one then would be the maximum loading setup 1170 liters Now welcome to Thomas's Driving Lounge here today with this lounge car, the Citroen C4 Cactus 1.2 liter three cylinder petrol engine here in this case then with 110 horsepower together with the automatic gearbox. And of course this new suspension, Citroen Advanced Comforts called in Germany and some other markets or those progressive hydraulic cushions PHC. And it depends on your market how they really call it and the overall driving feeling you know as for you know, for example the, the, the steering and engine also the automatic gearbox this has not changed but what they have done is first of all increase the noise insulation so it is more silent than in the pre facelift version we we'll also head on to the motorway very soon, where we can test it at higher speeds. At the moment, just about you know city traffic, which this car is of course mainly about. But I already feel it here now at about 50 kilometers an hour. A better noise insulation, definitely a little bit, a little bit calmer to drive, and that's of course always a good thing. This, uh, the steering here is pretty light, so it does not need any strength. To control it the downside of that is of course that you don't have you know so much feel in the steering wheel it doesn't feel that natural and one thing that was a characteristic basically suspension wise before is that when you for example do a lane change a quicker one like this so far the car tilted really a lot also, when you're now going now on the brakes here, this, by the way, beeping sound from the autonomous emergency brake, which you get then optional or um, beginning of a mid trim. The car also shaked like this. You know, it was pretty funny because there was a standard suspension, and the standard suspension was set up in a very, very soft way. Now, here with the new suspension, this extreme tilting is gone. This is one of the, you know, first key findings at the same time they still have a somewhat calm calm and soft setup for this new suspension here so it's not that it would have become stiff now or sporty this car is far from sporty which is not a bad thing because not everyone wants a sporty small or compact size car you know as I told you earlier, this car is somewhat between small and compact segment and that's also how it feels like driving. It doesn't feel not necessarily like a full grown, grown up compact segment car, but also not like a real small segment car. So it's definitely also an interesting niche they found here for this vehicle. Um, ever since they introduced it, I also felt it you know, was supposed to be somewhat a fun vehicle. By the way, I'm not sure if you um, got that here on, on camera. This automatic gearbox is, you know, relaxing to drive if you compare it to the manual gearbox, of course. But sometimes, even if you're just accelerating slightly, it's like not stuttering. So um, I'm not 100% satisfied with that. If I would have the choice and I wouldn't um, you know, care about the, the, the extra price for that, I would still go for an automatic gearbox because it's just more relaxing, especially if you think about most of us are stuck in traffic quite a lot. And then of course it's a little bit annoying to you know, clutch, clutch in, clutch out. And so this, especially for city traffic, the automatic gearbox is always really nice to have. Here when you're at um, mediocre speed and 
uh, middle throttle input, then it's always working fine. But in those situations where you just apply the throttle slightly or you know, maybe approaching the next traffic light, then sometimes it's a little bit too stuttering for me. So maybe they should fix, uh, fix the, um, you know, the automatic system there. Maybe I think it just needs a little fine tune, maybe with a torque or something, and then it uh, basically should be fine. Here, by the way, now at uh, city drive speeds, I can show you again what I mean when I'm doing like this. I mean, I feel the car is soft, yes, and it's tilting just a little bit. But if you would have done that with the pre-facelift suspension, it would be like meow, meow, meow. That again was somehow fun and characteristic for this vehicle, but not really good. So I think the suspension setup they have found here now is really nice. So it is stiff enough for this vehicle that you don't feel lost like you did in the pre phase of sometimes. But at the same time, it's still comfortable enough. So relatively soft still. And my first impression is actually quite positive. Whoa, well, you know for what, I'm, what I'm experiencing so far here. Soon there will be also a part of the track where will there be more potholes and stuff because that's what all what they're also trying to, to achieve. And also when there are some waves on the road that the car basically keeps in a straight line just the suspension moves underneath that like it was the case with those old Citroen, like the famous hydraulic suspensions. Again, it's not the same technology they're using now, which they did in the past. You know, but it ha it's supposed to have a somewhat similar effect. And I think it's a great idea that they try to pick up on this heritage again and also use this you know, innovative suspension system for cars which are not super, super expensive, because usually there are now some potholes. Of course, you do feel them, but it's really no comparison to the pre facelift model, which was very rough over bumps. Of course, it is not a feeling like you would have an expensive air suspension. So that is still a difference. You don't have a, a carpet ride or something. Um, I'm trying to really search the potholes now. That is really well done, considering the price of the vehicle and also how the suspension was before and how um, that was close. And <laughs> no one has seen that. No one. And considering how, how you know, sometimes rough the suspension was in the pre-facelift pre version, this is probably one of the best updates they've done here with those facelift. You can really argue about the exterior changes if it's more likable because it's more subtle or if it has lost some of the very unique character. The car is still somewhat unique here, for example. Also, when I'm going over those fierce potholes, you also don't feel it as for the sound so much on the interior. So um, in some of the cheaper vehicles, you hear like bam, bam, bam. Just from the sound, you know, you do feel those potholes then on the inside of the cabin with a low frequency sound. But that's also, even, let me go the side of the road here. It is really not a problem. So, and also what you then feel with your lower back, how much of those bumps are getting transported in your lower back, and that's like zero. So, very unique setup here, considering the price and considering the segment we have. So, one of the things I was looking for with most with new suspension, really good job. Again, conclusion is for that, don't expect an air suspension like feeling, but with this new technology, they could really even up the gap to some of the competitors which have really the, the best suspensions. So, pretty cool. Oh, <laughs> there's a cactus. Didn't want to wave though. Probably because it was the pre phase of model. And then they were saying like, hey, look at those snobs, the new facelift model. We don't read those. Not like with motorcyclists, who basically always greet each other. <laughs> so, a little bit more city driving before we head on to the motorway. Here, like almost 90 degree corner. You see, you don't have to steer too much, and it's really light. And then again, I step on the brakes a little bit harder now. 
see the tits? A little bit dipping with the nose. Still has some of this soft suspension character. Definitely not like before. I really like what they've, what they've changed here with the vehicle. Well, um, on the long term run seating, by the way, those seats here, they look super comfortable, you know, sofa alike. Mm, they're also very wide. They come closer to a vintage vehicle. And we also saw in the interior that we used, you know, used to see some vintage stuff that has been kept also here in the face to version. I think pretty cool design wise. Mm, also on the short term one, you feel somewhat cozy, sofa alike in the seats. But on the long term run, mm, there could also be some, some better comfort from a seating position wise. At least for me, as a rather taller driver, it might be different if you're a little bit smaller. But definitely cool what they found here, you know, material wise on, on, on different elements on the vehicle. And that's still what I, what I like about this vehicle. On the one hand, it's for sure not one where we could say, ah, it's, it's a perfect car. But then again, it is relatively cheap for what it offers and for, for, for the size of the vehicle. That's again, you know, one of the, one of the big positive aspects. And also when you, when you drive the car, it feels somewhat special still. It feels somehow, you know, it's a little bit like a Volkswagen Beetle being this modern vintage car, you know, having some vintage character, vintage look, special look, uniqueness, but at the same time being a modern car, you know, with infotainment system and digital tachometer and assistant systems and, and so on. By the way, there's always arguing about controlling the AC while driving. Yeah, you have to use the screen for that, you know. The shortcut, I've already opened it here now. And, um, but the buttons are placed relatively well. Still, yes, it is more distracting when you use the screen for that than you use a turning up. If you think about the new big Audi models, for example, where the AC unit controls are placed very low then, this, however, is still better to control. And you could also say, some just put it on 22 degrees Celsius, or I think that, that would be like something in the 70s in Fahrenheit, and they just leave it as it is. You know, AC on and just leave it, never control something, then it's actually fine. But if you're someone who tends to control the stuff, of course, it's a disadvantage. Uh, now, yeah, the petrol engine needs <laughs> some drive. Now, 60 kilometers to 100, let's go. You can see it struggles a little bit and also needs really some pushing. The automatic gearbox did the downshift. It's not a very powerful engine, but for the city drive, it's really enough. And since it's a turbo, even when you're here on the motorway, there's still something coming, you know, also already also in the fourth gear, then in 100, not too fast, but it's somewhat okay. Here now at 100 kilometers now, of course, noise level is higher, but yet again, I feel difference to the pre-facelift model. They've really done a good job in improving it. It is not best in segments still, as for the noise insulation, we have more silent cars there, but definitely a step ahead where I could say this is, uh, this is definitely a difference. They have improved that. Now, what about the stability here also on, on the higher speeds? See here, the suspension does a better job than before, especially at higher speeds. You sometimes felt a little bit strange than uh, with a very, very soft suspension. Here, it gives you a little bit more security also at those higher speeds. You also have a cruise control, by the way, sit on the left side of the steering wheel. You're just a normal one, and then you can use that one to relax a little bit more when you keep the steady speed. And we'll get off here again, because there's a very nice corner where we can also test suspension. We're going fast in this corner, there's a transverse bump in the road, sitting us to the side. Hmm, that was good. Some good grip. And that was also something, you know, fast in the corner, and then 
we were getting offset a little bit by those transverse bump. And I'm not sure if you could catch it on camera, but I felt really like the suspension really even that out very well and also between the front and the and the and the rear axle pretty much even so and when i did this test before with the old cactus um that was becoming almost a little scary so i think this new suspension also offers you more safety and a more secure feeling especially when you're driving a little bit faster so what do you think? Still a very unique car. It is somehow fun to drive it. I guess, you know, engine power wise, you also have to consider the price. If you want more powerful engines, you also pay more money for that. So um, I think considering the price, it's also okay. And consumption wise, it's also not too bad actually. So we could score here in our tests, an average consumption of about six and a half uh, liters on 100 kilometers. Mm, you know, we had equal consumption figures, for example, with the, with the smaller ones, with the Citroen C3 or the Citroen C3 Acros. There we, um, you know, we landed up at about six liters on 100 kilometers. So this one is not then the big difference. There's also not a big weight difference between those vehicles. They're using the same engines. So that's also, you know, something you can understand and well, considering it's an automatic gearbox, which usually also consumes a little bit more, not in every case today, in the past it was the, the case in every case, but nowadays sometimes they are also more fuel saving, of course, depending on your driving. If you're really a good fuel saver driving, then you can still do something more with the manual gearbox, um, you know, however. It shouldn't make too much of a difference. If you want a little bit more power, you can still go for the 130 horsepower variant. Then with the manual gearbox, that would also be um, a solution. But overall, I think still a very interesting ride here, what I've done with the updates of the car. And now to our conclusion for today with the Citroen C4 Cactus with the recent product update. Exterior, yes, it has lost a little bit of this unique character with the more subtle air bumps and stuff, but still it is somewhat unique, I think. On the interior, also a very unique setup and also the whole vehicle concept being somewhere between the small cars and the compact segment cars. So still a very unique and I think likable approach but of course, it's still somewhat a love or hate car, even if it's not that polarizing as it was before with the facelift. Then driving wise, of course, the suspension has changed. This is the most significant difference and they've really done a good job. They have a more secure, a more safe feeling. It is somewhat sportier if you compare it to the pre-facelift version, but not sporty at all still, of course. It's really doing a great comfort job overall. So that's also a good update and also better noise insulation. What are the downsides? Well, I think the long-term comfort is seating position-wise not that good for taller people. Some things in the interior are of course not that well done uh, processing-wise, but then again, we have a lot of interesting different colors and material choices, especially if you consider the price of this vehicle, because that's still very low, entry about 17,000 euros. And if you pick everything in it, with the automatic gearbox, top trim level 23,000 euros. And then if you compare the competitors in this respect, this one here is extremely cheap in comparison for that. Thank you so much for tuning in to Autogafuel and also tune in next time.